Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Pastor Van is all for L. Weathersby. And Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. And this is That Just the Truth Anyhow with the Weathersby's of Sound Alarm Ministries coming to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. Mm -hmm. We're coming to you guys with a great series. We're going to try to conclude that thing today. Amen. Much, we're going to get right into it. Father God, we just want to thank you and praise you and worship you, God. We give you glory. We give you the honor. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Great is our God. Hallelujah. Thank you right now, Father. Hallelujah. For the victory that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanking you right now, God. Hallelujah. Still for this new year, the fifth day in the year. New year, Father. We thank you. We praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, O oh God, because you gave it to us, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your forgiveness. Thanking you right now, God. Hallelujah. For the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's still able to save souls, oh God. Still able, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, and has miraculous power today. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, we are here. Hallelujah. With your people, oh God. Send your glory. Send your word, oh God. Illuminate our minds, eyes. Take the scales off our eyes. Hallelujah, my Father. That we may behold the wondrous works in your laws, oh God. And not only, God, be a hearing receiver, a men, a mentor of it, but a doer of your word, oh God. In Jesus' name, oh God, that live out our learning, Father. Oh God, we want to thank you for saving our souls, oh God, for bringing home backslidden hearts and minds back to you, Father. In Jesus' name, God, through the powerful, unadulterated, uncompromising word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for counting us worthy. Hallelujah. To be able, God, to be used of you for your glory and honor, God. Father, let the words of our mouth, meditation in our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and our souls say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're coming out of 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, 1 through the 8 verses out of the Amplified Bible. And we're going to read as thus. Does any of you dare, when he has a matter of complaint against another brother, to go to law before unrighteous men, men neither upright nor right with God, laying it before them instead of before the saints, the people of God? Do you not know that the saints, the believers, will one day judge and govern the world? And if the world itself is to be judged and ruled by you, are you unworthy and incompetent to try such petty matters of the smallest course of justice? Do you not know also that we Christians are to judge the very angels and pronounce opinion between right and wrong for them? How much more then as to matters pertaining to this world and of this life only? If then you do not have such cases of everyday life to decide, why do you appoint as judges to lay, them to lay them before those who from the standpoint of the church count for least and are without standing? I say this to move you to shame. Can it be that there are really that can it be that there really is not one man among you who in action is governed by piety? and integrity and is wise and competent enough to decide the private grievances, disputes and quarrels between members of the brotherhood. But brother goes to law against brother and that before Gentile judges who are unbelievers without faith or trust in the gospel of Christ. Why? The very fact of your having lawsuits with one another at all is a defect, a defeat. An evidence of positive moral loss for you. Why not rather let yourself suffer wrong and be deprived of what is your due? Why not rather be cheated, defrauded, and robbed? A verse. But instead, it is you, yourselves, who wrong and defraud, defraud and that even your own brethren. 
by so treating them. May God have a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. The word of the Lord um, <coughs> is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We're in the series that we're going to conclude this end of the month of January, which would be the 30th day. Amen. Um, to judge or not to judge. Uh, what do the scriptures say? Amen. To judge or not to judge, what do the scriptures say? Mm -hmm. Now, we've already identified in the preceding uh, two weeks about how uh, uh, we're, we're to able to judge. Because mm -hmm. the question has arose and is still uh, heavy and hard, going heavy and fast in the body of Christ about judging. Mm -hmm. There's a misconception about being able to judge. And, and quite often when you come in contact with people, and this usually comes from the people from the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you hear something like this, please don't judge me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you that not only will we judge, but there's a time when, and there's, and, and there's a methodology to the judgment on how to judge. So now we're here in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and in that first verse, it says, Does any of you dare, when he has a matter of complaint against another brother, mm -hmm. to go to law before unrighteous men, men neither upright nor right with God, laying it before them, mm -hmm. instead of before the saints, the people of God? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to understand, you, that particular verse there does not mean that they're that the, this, this brother, that this thing that you got against this brother has anything to do with sin. That's not what it's saying. Mm -hmm. It says it has a matter of complaint against another brother. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere in the, in the scripture where it says if you have ought with a brother, mm -hmm. then you before you even give up your gift to God, you lay that thing down, That's go right. to them and get it right. That's uh -huh. right. Then there's another scripture that says that anytime that you find that there's something going on with you and somebody, mm -hmm. you go and see if you can't write that thing. But if, that, right. if they don't want to get with you and get that thing straightened out, you go back with two to three witnesses. If they That's don't want right. to hear it then, then you bring them before the whole church. That's right. And then if they refuse to acquiesce over to uh, the governing of the church, then the whole church sets them out of the church. That's right. That ain't sending them to hell. No. That's setting them out Listen. until they get themselves in a place where right. they can be That's reinstated and restored. Uh-huh. If, you, if you, you, you want to take your uh, things to the law uh, before unrighteous men, neither upright nor right with God, mm -hmm. laying it before them. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that if you go before uh, uh, unrighteous and non-believers, you can't expect to find serious judgment on your behalf. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they hate you. They flat out hate you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean they hate me? They don't know me. No, but they know who you represent. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it is not you that they're hating, but they're hating the Christ within you. Yeah. So don't expect to get uh, a righteous judgment from unrighteous people. How That's do I know right. that to be so? That's well, right. the Bible tells me there's another story of a woman, a widow, that went before an unjust yes, judge, judge yes. to have to have a settled issue with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that the judge was unjust, mm -hmm. but that woman had a bit of wisdom within mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. because when she went before this unjust judge, he was not going to hear her, right. but she vexed him day in and day out, mm -hmm. day in and day out, till finally this unjudged just unjust judge came mm -hmm. to the conclusion, unless I hear this woman's complaint, she will vex me to no end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you want to spend time going back and forth to the judge before you get the right judgment. What you need to Praise do is, is not go there at all. And this scripture says, uh, instead of before the saints, the people of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Do you not know that the saints, the believers, will one day judge and govern the world? Now, what is God saying? Hmm. Judge, judge, govern the world. Judge and govern the world. Well, let me tell you. This is not in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. That's this right. is not in the afterlife. That's right. This is the time when Jesus Christ is going to come back and he's going to establish a kingdom here on this earth for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. This is the, during that period of time. And then at that particular point in time that we will be ruling with him, those mm -hmm. that are his. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be governing. Governing what? Sin. That's right. Those that still yet have not uh, uh, received him as their personal savior. Mm -hmm. So we will rule and govern with him mm -hmm. in this life. Oh mm -hmm. my God, some of you probably didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the world itself is to be judged and ruled by you, that's the believers in Christ, mm -hmm. are you unworthy and incompetent to try such petty matters mm -hmm. of the smallest courts of the justice? So what am I saying? You know what? We spend a lot of time dealing with each other over issues and things that don't really matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, the, in the big scheme of things, when you really mm -hmm. get down to it, mm -hmm. what does it matter 
that you that the person next door, okay, let's put it like this. Mm -hmm. The person next door, they have a tree. Mm -hmm. You own property. Their tree branch overlaps over into your yard. Mm -hmm. In the fall come, leaves are falling. And you got the leaves from your neighbor's tree falling into your manicured, mm -hmm. pedicured mm -hmm. lawn. Mm -hmm. And you get upset. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. That's and you go, what do you do? I'm going to the people's court to get justice. I'm a believer mm -hmm. in Christ, but I'm going to the people's court to get justice. Mm -hmm. What in the world? Why would you go, be, go put in all of that, go through all that, or was something petty is that? That's what the scripture That's is saying. Right. That's right. It's just petty matters. When you should be able to judge that amongst one another. You know, we ought to be able to judge that. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Both of you are believers in Christ. Right. Your mm -hmm. neighbor is a believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. You're a believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. So what are you telling me? This is what you're telling me. That probably, I and mean, your neighbor's in Christ and your believers in Christ, quite possibly you worship at the same place. Mm -hmm. Quite possibly. Mm-hmm. Outside of when you are in the four walls of the church, your building, that is, that place of worship, that might be the only time that you actively engage in interacting with one another. So what you're telling mm -hmm. me is because I don't have a real relationship with you out of the fact that we're mm -hmm. believers in Christ and we belong to the same church. Mm -hmm. When you do something that offend me, I'm going to, you know what, back in the day, you do something to me, I'm going to do, do something, something to you. To you. That's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Come on, God. Mm -hmm. We ought not be operating like that. God is trying to tell us again on, on judgment, on how to judge, when mm -hmm. to judge, and what to mm -hmm. judge. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. So are we that incompetent? The scripture said, are you unworthy and incompetent to try such petty matters of the smallest courts of justice? We should not be incompetent in God that we cannot allow the Holy Spirit, praise God, to settle petty, small matters. Praise God. Could it be that we still have a beam in our eye that we can't even get out the tiniest speck to help somebody else? Amen. It goes right back to a couple of segments that we had done already about getting that beam out of our eye so that we can judge the even smallest matters. Because the word of God says, don't you know also that we Christians, Christ-like, are to judge the very angels and pronounce opinion between right and wrong for them. We ought to be able to know what? Right from wrong. Mm -hmm. You know that through the scriptures. And something is just common sense. Praise God. Hallelujah. How much more then as to matters pertaining to this world and to this life only? And so we ought to be able to come together Praise God, hallelujah, out of the love of God, out of the respect of God and respect for one another to be able to know the difference between right and wrong. Hey Amen. You hold your thought right mm -hmm. there real quick because mm -hmm. I want to say something. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us what we should be able to do is to reason together. That's right. Come and let us reason together. That's right. And if you come and reason together, there's no reason for you to be running to a, a court of law That's to right. take your believer, fellow believer in Christ to court over a silly, simple matter. That's right. Because remember now, the measure that you and I dealt, dealt out to someone else is coming back to us. And he's right. We should be able to reason together, to come together, praise God, hallelujah, and honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. In that reasoning. Amen. Well, you know what? We're going to park it right there. We'll be right back. This is good. We all, we're about halfway done with, that, with this portion of the segment. Mm -hmm. So um, Heart Ministry Network TV, we'll be right back at you. Amen. Hey there. Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. Praise God. Along with my husband, Pastor Arthur Lee Weathersby. Praise God. And we are Sound the Alarm Ministries. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And we have a, a ministry on a, on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's just the truth anyhow. You all ought to join us. Praise God. God is speaking. He's speaking. Hallelujah. That's Amen. the truth. Anyhow, we're back. Amen. Pastor Vanders Arthur Weathersby. And Pastor Sherry Weathersby. All right, we're finishing up with that's just to, uh, to judge or to, uh, not to judge. Mm -hmm. What do the scripture says? And I think we're in the fourth verse. Is that where you're Amen. At? First Corinthians 6, 4? Yes, go ahead. If then you do have such cases of everyday life to decide. Every day. Why do you appoint as judges to lay them before those mm -hmm. who, from the standpoint of the church, 
count for least and are without mm -hmm. standing. Mm -hmm. So we got simple issues mm -hmm. that should, can obviously easily be decided amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. But what do we do? We appoint judges. We go to appointed judges of the land and go before them to take our little, our, our business mm -hmm. into the court. Mm -hmm. Now here's the, here's the strange thing about that. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you put yourself in that kind of a situation, you set yourself up for ridicule by the, the, the world. Amen. Because the world is sitting there saying, these are Christians? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is that love that I hear them mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Where is that love that God so loved the world he gave up his only begotten mm -hmm. son? Amen. Where is the mercy of their God that That's I hear them right. talking about? And you know what they're saying? See, here's what they're saying. They're saying this. They know the scriptures just like the devil knows That's the scriptures. Right. That's right. And when they're looking at us, they're looking at us according to what we do in accordance to the scriptures. That's right. We, on the other hand, when we look at them, we're looking at them according to what they do, according to how we see it. That's right. <laughs> not according to what the word of God says. And then when we're dealing with one another, we're not even dealing with one another in accordance to what the scriptures say we should be conducting ourselves. That's right. Because... Like the scriptures say, the first part in the verse four, we got to remember we have everyday cases every day in life to decide. Then when something comes up between a sister or a brother in the, in the body of Christ, whether we're in the church at that time or the building, praise God, or whether we're in the neighborhood or whatever's going on, we are. Then we want to act like that we're incompetent. We, I, we don't. I don't know what to do. What, what am I? What, what are we gonna do? This is appalling. And it's just a little minor thing and not realizing that you're judging every day of your life personally, praise God, and along with others. Well, you know, what? when you come to that place where you say you don't know what to do, then mm -hmm. I'm going to help you. Here's what you do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Amen. So that means we have to change our attitude. Praise God. When we have to, when we acknowledge the Lord, you can't acknowledge him and, and go to him any kind of way. You have to humble yourself. Praise God to be able to acknowledge him. First of all, you can't let the situation dictate your mind, dictate what you're going to do. The Holy Ghost is supposed to be dictating to us how we should move, live and have our being in him. So therefore, you got to get out of your mind. First of all, what's happening? What's going on? Humble ourselves. Praise God before the mighty hand of God and acknowledge him. And immediately, if you're in a close relationship with yeah. Jesus Christ, now, if you're far off from him, then you and I are going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. You going to have a problem if you're far off in your relationship because your relationship with God or our relationship in God does not start when we go to the house of God, the place of worship. That's right. This is an everyday life. Everyday Christian living and everything, Hallelujah, with the help of the Holy Ghost, that we do live and breathe and should, should be actually coming from our relationship with God. Amen. And when you go to John 15, chapter, he tells you about um, being vitally united <coughs> and connected to Him. Mm -hmm. We do that, we're going to be able to do all things, but with, apart right. from Him, we can't do nothing. That's right. And anytime you allow yourself to get a separation between you and God, you absolutely won't be able to do the right thing and make the right choices in your in your decision making and your judging. And so um, when we're so when we're separated from God for whatever reason, then when something happens between you and I or you and someone else, we're all in disarray. Well, we're going to be in disarray because the reason being is that when you're separated from God, then you're separated from that source that allows you to make the so proper decisions and, yes. and, and to come to the right conclusion. So then w your decision-making process is going to be messed up because you know why? Again, I'm in Proverbs. There's mm -hmm. a way. It seems right to a man. The end thereof is death or destruction. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens when you lean to your own understanding. And then it goes on to say, I say this to move you to shame. Can it be that really is not one among you who in action is governed by piety and integrity and is wise and competent enough to decide the private grievances, disputes, quarrels between members of the brotherhood. That ought to shame the believers in Christ. That's right. How is it that we're going to be able to judge the world? Mm -hmm. That's what it said. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be, we're going to be able to judge mm -hmm. the world. That's right. No, but we never. can't even come to a decision, a judgment about petty little things between us. That can't happen. It goes back again to that, that illustration mm -hmm. and the application of that illustration. You're talking about somebody got a speck in their eye, mm -hmm. but you got a beam protruding out of yours. Mm -hmm. The word says that you can't, 
you can't even clearly see the speck in somebody else's eye. How are you going to be able to do that when you have something that's obstructing your vision? That's right. So here's what God is saying. You're going to judge the quick. You're going to judge the earth, the world, in, 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 in when Christ rules on the earth. But you can't even take care of the situations among your own self. That's right. So obviously something must be wrong with that picture because it's really saying is, uh, uh, is wise and competent enough to decide the private grievances? No, go read the thing. I say to this to move you to shame. That's what he's trying to do, shame. Mm -hmm. Can it be really there is not one man among you? All he needs is just one. One. You know. One could put a thousand to flight. That's right. And you know, one is a good number. You one know, that's one is the only number, yes. if you know what I know, mm -hmm. because that's that's the, that's what how God operates on it. So we should be operating under the one same is. way. Mm -hmm. God said in his word that there was a time that he was going to pass judgment on a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. But he had a friend there mm -hmm. by the name of Abraham. And that's Abraham right. had uh, in that region, in that area, I said in that region, in that area, because in Sodom and Gomorrah dwelt uh, Abraham's nephew Lot and his family. Mm -hmm. God was going to destroy the whole oh, place because of the right. wickedness and perverseness of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. But he said that Abraham started to plead. He started to plead his case before mm -hmm. God on on Lot's behalf. Mm -hmm. He said, "If there is, if if there's fifty found um, righteous, will you destroy it? No, it won't do it. That's 40, right. no, 30, 20, 10. He's God said, one. if there's one, one found, I wouldn't do it. Say, that's right. Lord have mercy. There ought to be one. There ought to be one. There ought to be one, at least one. But um, the scripture says, but brother goes to law against brother, and that before Gentile judges who are unbelievers without faith or trust in the gospel of Christ. Amen. That is what that's shameful. Amen. Right? That is shameful. And that's, that's shameful. what you were saying earlier. Praise God. Where, where is the power? Where is the integrity of the saints? Praise God. Hallelujah. Where is the power of God? Where we're going to, we're taking one another to, to, to the unjust judge, those who don't believe. And it's almost like we're presenting to them, as you said, praise God, without faith and trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then how, how are we going to, how can we be even contenders of the faith? You can't. You can't. You won't be a contender. You'll be, watch this, a pretender. A pretender. Amen. I did a, I did a message about mm -hmm. are you a contender or a pretender for mm -hmm. the faith? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true because we got many people out there pretending mm -hmm. for the faith by, by professing the Lord Jesus Christ and doing all the things that appear to mm -hmm. put them in the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ except for one thing. They're not living out there. That's learning. right. Uh -huh. and, don't, and don't don't lose the love of God because someone is at fault. Praise God. Don't lose the, if you really got the love of God deep down in your heart and operate out of that love every day. Don't lose the heart of God's agape love because we find a brother or sister at fault or someone may find you at a fault. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose the love of God. The love of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. How are we going to lose the love of God, that which we were saved by, that which we were healed by, that which we were delivered by? While we were yet in our sin, he died for us. That same love some, that we lose when somebody do something wrong against us. Uh, a, a petty, we talk about petty matters now that we can decide amongst ourselves as the man of God had, had quoted our Isaiah. Come, let us reason together. Though our sins be as scarlet, he's able to make it white, white as snow. Now, do you want to see that brother or sister released from that? Amen. Because if you if you if you lose the love of God, then sister, you're losing the foundation of the faith. Yes. The foundation of the faith is built upon God's love. We would have no relation with the Lord Jesus Christ if love had not had anything to do with it. And if you're and if you're saying that, you're really saying I ain't got no faith and trust in God. I ain't got no faith and trust in what his word says mm -hmm. that can be done. The Bible says we can reason together mm -hmm. as believers in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be able to deal with one another from the sense of love, uh, the, uh, uh, the fruit of the spirit. We ought to be able to be able to interact with one another, even when we don't agree with one another. That's you know, right. here's the thing that's important about this and why this message is, and this lesson is so important. Mm -hmm. We ought to be able in the body of Christ to deal with one another in spite of the fact that there may be something that we got against one another. The reason why that ought to be able to be done, mm -hmm. because of what God did on our behalf. Amen. I'm Amen. telling you Amen. guys, if you look at the record, there is nothing. I don't care what you do, what page you open up, you will not be able to find any one thing that would have allowed God 
to come down here, sacrifice his life, mm -hmm. and, 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 and through the person of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and redeem us, mm -hmm. bring us back bring us into back. a real life standing back. relationship with him. Mm -hmm. it, there was nothing there except for one thing, and it wasn't in us. No. It was his love. It was his love. Because the scripture says, we love him because, because he, he first, first loved, loved us. us. And he loved us in such a way, that's the way we're supposed to love one another. So therefore, when we judge and we have things that we're going to bring before one another in judgment, petty stuff, arguments, disagreements, disputes, don't be looking to go run to a court. I'm going to sue you. I got to sue you. Mm -hmm. Don't you know the heathens do that? We're supposed to be set apart. That's right. Consecrated. Walking in the holiness and righteousness right. of Jesus Christ. Not in the holiness and righteousness of us. Because our righteousness is as filthy rags, stinking in the nostril of God. And it brings us to shame yes, when does. we don't resemble the one who we should be resembling. Amen. The likeness of Jesus Christ. That's why the Holy Spirit came that he may conform us into his likeness, doing things like him and in his image. This is what we want people to see. I don't know what... A lot of people want want, to, want people to see in them, but I want people to see Christ in me. Yes, Amen. yes, we understand there are things that we're going to go through in trials, tests, and tribulations. But the bottom line is we ought to be seeking to be like our Father. Amen. Now listen to what verse 7 says. Why the very mm -hmm. fact of you're having <coughs> lawsuits with one another at all is a defect, a defeat, and evidence of positive moral loss for you. Mm -hmm. Why not rather let yourself suffer wrong and be deprived of what is your due. Why not rather be cheated, defraud, and robbed? But instead, it is you, yourselves, who wrong and defraud, defraud that even your own brethren by so treating them. So what is God saying mm -hmm. in this word? He says, you know what? By the fact that we're, we're so busy trying to sue one another over every little bitty, titty, mm -hmm. titty, weeny thing, we are, we are uh, oh my God, it is, a, it is an evidence. It's, it is, a, oh my God. It's a defeat. We're defeating our own self. That's it's right. evidence of our positive moral loss. Mm -hmm. A positive Mor of evidence moral of loss. positive moral loss. How in the world could we allow ourselves to end up with a moral loss? Watch this. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Let's just go back. First Corinthians five seventeen in the end. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians five Corinthians. seventeen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians five seventeen mm -hmm. in the Amplified Bible. Uh huh. 2 Corinthians 5.17, mm -hmm. you'll find these words. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. if any person, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, mm -hmm. he is a new creation, a new creature mm -hmm. altogether. Watch this. The old previous moral mm -hmm. and spiritual condition has passed away. Passed away. Now, that's if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Christ, that old spiritual right. moral condition has passed away. But if you're operating in the manner that we're operating in and finding ourselves in 1 Corinthians 5, I mean 6. And what verse was that? Was that 7? 7. Yeah, 6, 7. Mm -hmm. If we're operating like that, that thing, that thing that should have passed away, somehow or another, it didn't. Mm -hmm. It didn't. Right. Because it's a... It's a positive, more, it's a loss for it's us. a loss for us. It, it, why, why the very fact of you're having loss with one another at all is a defect, a defect. Mm -hmm. So in other words, quite possibly, mm -hmm. you know, they had a, this thing that they said in the old church, especially mm -hmm. down home, mm -hmm. um, salvation. Mm -hmm. They just said you had to go and spend time at the morning, morning bench. bench. And if you had not received the salvation the way that you should have mm -hmm. had, you need to go back. Back to the morning, to the morning bench. bench. Well, I need to tell somebody here, and I'm going to help somebody. Because mm -hmm. uh -huh. quite possibly when you thought you got saved, you really didn't get saved. What, you, what am I saying, Pastor? I know some of y'all out there believe that salvation came to you when you got baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you got baptized. No, mm -hmm. it didn't. No. Some of you who, who believe that you got saved, when, but you were doing good things. Mm -hmm. I've been a good person all my life. I've been in church all my life. No, Amen. you did not get saved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, if you didn't do... Confess and acknowledge with your lips. That's right. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's right. Believe in your hearts. Cling to it. Adhere to it. Rely on the truth that God the Father raised him from, from the dead. dead. You will be saved. That's Romans mm. 10, 9. That's right. You ain't saved. That's right. You ain't saved. That's so there's, right. a more, there's a defect. Mm -hmm. There's a defect in your salvation. Mm -hmm. You thought you were saved. Mm -hmm. But you weren't because you didn't do the right thing. So, uh, uh, so God is saying. That's God right. is saying. And evidence is a positive moral loss for you. 
Why not rather let yourself suffer wrong and be deprived of what is your due? Instead of you trying to, uh, 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 you know, get things fixed for you to mm -hmm. get, you know, may be made whole. Mm -hmm. Really, maybe you need to just go on and, and just bite the bullet on That's that right. thing. It's small. It's That's petty. right. Small. What, it don't profit nothing. Let it roll end. off. Yeah. What does it do for you in 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 in, in the in the, in the big scheme of things? Will it get you in heaven? No. 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 Great is my reward in heaven. Yes. Down here on the earth, ain't nothing happening. So I think we've done a fairly effective yes. job here Thank with this Lord. teaching. Thank God. To judge or not Thank to you, judge. Jesus. What do the, what scriptures, the scriptures say? say? Pastor Vantis, Arthur L. Weathersby. And Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. We are Sound the Alarm Ministries, and this is that's just the truth anyhow, with Amen. the Weathersby's of Sound the Alarm Ministries, brought to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. We're going to be back at you next week. We're going to have a whole new series. I don't know what it's going to be, but the Lord does. <laughs> Amen. And you, you know what, until we come back. We do the thing. In, In the, the Lord. Lord. God, God bless you. Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye.